right. First, I want to say thank you to everyone for attending, and especially a big thank you to all of our veterans, especially this week uh, as we celebrate 75 years with D-Day. You know, last year's speech was about the history of the Constitution, why it's important, and that it separates us from every other country and grants us protections against our government from becoming tyrannical and stepping on our throats. I talked about how the Second Amendment was the most important amendment because it literally is the protector of all other amendments, the only thing stopping our government from infringing on our God-given rights through promise of lethal retaliation. I had full intention of coming to you today after months of planning a speech about the atrocities of socialism in other countries that have escalated out of control in part because of gun control. I'm not saying we aren't going to talk about that today, we definitely are going to, but recent events and actions have shed light on deeper and more pressing matters of concern. I've come to educate you further and build upon last year's speech. If the Second Amendment is a protector of all other amendments, then surely we must have a protector of the Second Amendment. The reason we have gathered here today is to exercise our First Amendment right, the right of free speech. The only way to fight back against those that are using false statistics, bloated reporting, fake news, and overexposure of firearm-related stories to suppress our Second Amendment right and institute crazy gun control laws and outright bans is for us to gather together and raise our voices in opposition to project that we are not alone out here and that we stand together, that we will fight for our constitutional rights. As Coleon Noir recently tweeted, when an anti-gun politician asks you, why do you need an AR-15? You respond with, because I don't trust you and you keep telling me that I don't need one. It's a running observation that once government institutes a social program, you can never get rid of it and it only ever bloats even further. Yet the greatest social contract written in this country, the Constitution, is constantly under attack and they are trying to abolish it because these politicians and radicals know that once you remove the means of protection and red tape from our founding documents, it gives government the opportunity to assume as much control over your daily lives as possible and without the means to protect and defend yourself, pass that. Speaking of tyrannical governments, I promise to talk about Venezuela and their history on gun control. Under Hugo Chavez, the government banned private gun ownership in 2012, yet the overall crime rate has increased ever since. Crime has grown so pervasive in Venezuela that the military is ordered to avoid public places at night because criminals attempt to steal their weapons with robberies in the country often targeting unaware individuals using a kill first, steal later mentality. Chavez's government sought to promote class conflict and social fragmentation in order to establish a dominant leadership, which in turn encouraged criminal gangs to kill, kidnap, uh, rob, and extort. By this time Chavez died in 2013, Venezuela was ranked the most insecure nation in the world by Gallup. Yeah, Chavez died. Can we get a little holler for that one again? I love the Space Force shirt, by the way. <laughs> Crime has also continued to increase under Chavez's successor, President Nicolas Maduro, a bus driver who was able to be elected leader that now eats steaks that cost a couple hundred U.S. dollars while his people scrounge through trash and trace, chase trash trucks to scavenge for scraps. We currently have a sitting U.S. Senator that is running for president in 2020 that has stated that he is not only an avowed socialist and praises country like, countries like Venezuela, but has also stated that bread lines are a, quote, good thing because in other countries the rich get the food. Well, what he fails to mention is that the lines are due to shortages and while some in the front may get the crumbs on the shelves, the majority will go home empty-handed. But Chris... Socialism works in Scandinavian countries. Well, crazy socialist voice in my head, not once do you factor in the interventionalism of the West with military backing, among other accommodations, allowing them to free up funds for massive social programs for countries only a fraction our size, mind you, proving that socialism doesn't work on its own and still needs to be propped up by systems like capitalism. And by the way, those supposedly great countries are also reaping the benefits of open borders with a shocking influx of immigrants that are coincidentally accompanied by a drastic rise in cases of rape and violent crimes. It almost makes them wish that they had uh, firearms. Excuse me. 
So excuse my ADD. I'll get back to Venezuela here. There's a mass starvation, increased crimes, homicides, horrendous health care because of a lack of resources like running water and electricity, people killing zoo animals and scavenging through trash or for food, and all this only decades after being a leading economy due to its abundant source of natural resources like oil. So what happened? A tyrannical dictatorship that has put their steel-toed boots on the necks of citizens that are no longer able to defend themselves or voice their concern. I'm going to get a little off topic, but I will connect this all for you. How many movie fans do we have out there? Like movies? Yeah, you can. <laughs> well, there's a website called Rotten Tomatoes that uses scores of moviegoers instead of critics, who obviously never knew what the hell they were talking about anyway. So track with me here for a minute. On the surface, you would think that this is a good idea. I mean, the concept shouldn't be alien to us, a site for the people, by the people. So imagine my surprise when I recently saw an article headline this past week that read, Rotten Tomatoes needs to kill its audience scores. You see, their reasoning is that user reviews that they consider trolls for movies like Captain Marvel and The Last Jedi caused the ratings to tank, and they believe that is because they considered uh, minor storyline devices that pissed off conservatives who then had to, a vendetta to collapse the scores. There's a bunch of social justice warrior stuff wrapped up in those movies. Here's my point. The left and those writing these articles are not happy with differing opinions from their own, and the only way to correct this isn't through civil discourse and hashing out our opinions, it's to shut down the opinions of others. This week, Steven Crowder's YouTube channel was demonetized. The Blaze was suspended for a period of time from posting articles to their new site after posting a story about a girl with special needs recording her teachers verbally abusing her. With Facebook calling it clickbait. And Lila Rose of Live Action Network, an anti-abortion initiative, was told by Twitter that unless she removes any mention of the abortion procedures and ultrasounds from her Twitter account and her website, which is about abortion, by the way, that she is no longer allowed to advertise on Twitter. Believe me when I tell you this, we are under assault right now, and their first objective is to silence us and dissolve our opinions from public discourse so that our opinions can't be considered an option or alternative to their intolerant points of views that don't allow for straying from their line of toe. Once this goal is all but achieved, the discourse on the Second Amendment is swept under the rug, the right to bear arms will vanish, and with it, the Constitution amendment by amendment. The truth is, we, the legal gun owners of the United States, with over 400 million firearms, only account for 1% of gun crimes in the country, and laws of control or banning will only affect us, while criminals will continue to living outside the rule of law, untraced, undetected, and fearless against a disarmed society. Bans on firearms in other countries have led to less gun crimes and yet an increase in homicides, which shows that it's less about the tool than the user. Nearly 60% of all U.S. gun-related deaths are attributed to suicide, and I think we can almost all agree that if someone wants to kill themselves, they will certainly find a way to do it. It also goes to show you that we do not have a firearm problem here in the United States, but a mental health crisis, a crisis that we increasingly see coddled so as not to hurt feelings instead of treatment. Possibly the biggest mental health issue can be attributed to those who identify on the left with liberalism. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the American United States. <laughs>